The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the robot simulator in Robot Basic. We're going to create a robot and make it move. And this is how simple it is to do so. Of course, there's a lot more to it than that. So let's start by making the robot, the robot leave a trail behind it as it's moving so we can visualize the path it took. And there it is. Now the robot, will, if it encounters any color on the screen, it will consider it as an obstacle. It, sometimes we need certain things to be not considered as obstacles. We use Art Invisible to give it a list of colors that will be considered as invisible or non-obstacles. And our pen will use, by default, the first color on the list to draw with and that way, when the robot encounters its own trail, will not be considered as an obstacle. Let's then put an obstacle in the path. And we'll use one of Robot Basics graphics commands to create a circular obstacle of diameter 100 and color red. And see what happens. As the robot tried to move forward 100 pixels, it collided with the obstacle since it didn't know about it and gave us this error, which says error, a robot has collided with an obstacle in line 4. And here we are, the error is highlighted, that code, and it's line number 4, as we see there. So how do we make the robot stop when it encounters an obstacle, not try to go forward anymore? We do this by looping and forwarding one pixel at a time as long as the robot hasn't encountered an obstacle. So as long as it hasn't encountered an obstacle, not, it will go forward and it will stop the moment it does. Now, how do we find out if there is an obstacle or not? There are many ways in Robot Basic. One of them is to use infrared sensors and the function rField reports on the status of infrared sensors. I'll explain this in a second a little bit more. But as long as the front infrared sensor, this is what this is, and it's, uh, we'll explain it a bit more later. As long as it's not sensing anything, we go forward. So let's do that. And there it is. It's gone forward as long as it's not sensing anything. What would be nice is to visualize and see what these sensors are doing. And one way we can do that with Robot Basic is using the debug version of the field function, which will automatically, by default, use the second color on the invisible colors list to draw the infrared sensors so we can see them. And there it is, you've just glimpsed them. We'd like to see them a bit longer, so let's put a loop here. Well, true. And test for those sensors in an infinite loop, which will keep them on all the time. So they'll keep turning on and off so we can see them a bit longer. Now, the function reports a number, which is made up of these five bits, as a, bi as a binary addition of these. So 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, altogether 31. But So if this is on and this is on, that will be 1 and 4, it will be 5. But we're interested in this situation only with position 4, value 4. So that's why we use the AND here to AND it with 4 so we don't care about the others. And as long as that position is not reporting any obstacle, we're forwarding. Now let's make this do a bit more interesting of a project. We could go around this obstacle this way or this way. I'm going to opt this way. So we're going to make the robot go around the obstacle, circumnavigate the obstacle all the way, just keep going around and around using these sensors. I'm going to start with, and one way we could do this is by turning, forwarding, turning, forwarding. So keep turning and forwarding, it's hugging the contour of the obstacle. So I'm going to turn the robot around to the right until this sensor, which is value 16, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, is touching the obstacle. So let's do this. So while not touching, feel the sense of value 16 we are going to our turn which is the way to make the robot turn to the right 
positive one, one degree at a time. So there it is, and it's gonna turn until this sensor is touching and you can see it's touching. If we make the robot now move forward a bit longer, eventually this sensor will miss the obstacle. So that's one way to move forward just enough. And then we turn again and so on. Let's do that. So while is sensing, so I'm not putting a nut here. There's no nut here. While is sen sensing the sensor value 16, I'm going to go one pixel. And there it is just now missing the obstacle. So now we need to turn, and we, I'm going to use this sensor now. So one, two, four, eight. So as long as eight is not touching, I'm going to keep turning until it touches. So let's do that. While is not sensing the position eight, or well, value eight, I'm going to make a turn. But this time I'm going to make a turn to the left, so it's minus one degree at a time. So it's going to go touch, not touch, turn until eight touches, and watch how eight is touching now. Okay, now if I go forward, notice 16 is not touching. So if I go forward until 16 is touching, we will be inching forward. So while is not touching the sensor 16, R forward. Sorry. Uh, yeah, R forward. But I'm going to make a mistake deliberately here. So I'm going to make it one Q and see what happens. And this is where you get a legal numerical format in line 17. So yes, we have here, and it's highlighted for us, and there is line 17, and this is the obviously the illegal format, and it says line 17 there. So let's correct it and see what happens now. Okay, now if we do this in a loop, this repeat all those actions instead of typing them again and again in a loop. Let's indent them so that they are easily readable. And this time also, notice these lines will never be reached because that's the above is an infinite loop and we don't get out of it. We don't need actually need them anyway. So here we're going to delete them. And let's also remove the D this time, so we are not running slowly. We don't need to watch the beams anymore. And there it is, it's going around the obstacle. It's not in a perfect circle. So let's improve on the algorithm. First of all, let's put the D back here, so that we can visualize the sensors. And notice, if you look at it closely, you'll notice that we don't really need 16. If we use 8, and we keep forwarding until 8 misses the object, then turn until it touches again and keep doing that, we'll probably get a better path around the obstacle. Let's try that. So remove this. We don't need it anymore. So while not touching, keep turning until it touches. And then while touching, so we don't need that, and it's 8 actually. So let's do 8. So while 8 is touching forward, so forward until it doesn't touch anymore, and then, of course, this will make it touch back again and so on. So now let's try it without the D field. So it runs quickly. Now it is going around in a full circle around the obstacle. What you've just seen is a demonstration of the rapid development that's possible with Robot Basic. The visualization, the ability to see the beams, the infrared beams, is impossible with a normal robot, uh, with a physical robot project. And the 
the rapid development, the ease with which we can change things and quickly try things, helps us develop algorithms. And we're not afraid in trying different approaches and different ways of doing things. And this is the power of the simulator in Robot Basic. It enables you to do development of robotic algorithms easily and rapidly.